I want to go straight to the Word of God uh, this morning, and we're going to look at a story that is familiar uh, to us, and I think there will be some new insights that you may not have seen before. And sometimes when, when we look at a story, uh, you know, we can say, well, you know, I see, I see that that affects somebody that I'm seated next to, or boy, that'd be a great thing for, for my roommate to hear, or somebody that I go to class with to hear, or somebody at my job to hear but it may not affect you. And then all of a sudden you are looking at it, reading it, or hearing it in a a whole fresh new way in which it's the time of season that you're, and season of life that you're walking through. And you say, wow, did I hear from God on that one? I believe there are ones that are listening to me right now where you're going to have that wow sense as we look at the story of Bartimaeus once more to say, you know what? I'm seeing this in a whole fresh light. And I can see that God is really speaking to me in, in a new um, way. And I, by the way, I love to hear baby voices. We are growing as a church. We have beautiful babies that have come into this congregation. And, um, and it's all about this next generation, you guys. It's all about a sense that what we're doing will matter for the next generation. So as you see these young families that have you know, their babies, and we have several that have had babies uh, recently, congratulate them. Look at their baby and pray a prayer that's as big as our God's heart for our generation and for our world because I believe that these babies that are being born are going to shake our world. Can you say amen? Let's look in the, um, Mark, the 10th chapter and, and in the 46th verse to the 52nd verse. And by the way, I do at times feel like I'm getting older. And um, I mean, Lisa just said, you know, and 20 years ago, we were with people who we knew for 20 years. And it's like, you know, honestly, how old are we, 60? I mean, we're, we're trying to think through. Time's passing by quickly, but I still feel so young. But I went into Joss Bank. Is that the name? Is that how you pronounce it? And jo- Jose Josue Bank. And, and uh, back to the salsa music. Um, and, and I went in there, and they had these things that were on sale that were the little glasses that you wear. And, and I thought that if I buy the glasses, I mean, why get the ones that are halftime magnification? And why get the ones that are one-time magnification when you, for the same price, can get two times magnification? It's the exact same price. And I'm thinking, boy, they haven't caught on to this. <laughs> and so I bought the two-time magnification. If I'm going to put the $10 out, I want the two-time magnification. Now I've got to hold my books <laughs> like this to read. I didn't realize what that was all about. Okay, I'll do my best to read this here. In the 46th verse of the 10th chapter and going through the end of the chapter, then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling for you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. What a beautiful story. I think that we're challenged at times by the fact that we have a healing God. You may be here this morning and you're, you have a virus, you have something that you are fighting in your physical body. I want you to know we believe in healing. We believe in healing. And I pray that God will heal you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet as only he can. If you're facing something right now that's a, a, you know, part, something within your organs, your physical organs, or, or, or a limb, or, or your sight, or whatever it may be, I pray that the healing power of God will come upon you. Now, I can't heal you, and the person next to you can't heal you, but the Bible says that we're to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We believe in a healing God. Can you say amen? amen. I mean, to believe otherwise is to say that at some point, God stopped having the ability. God's no longer able. Or to say, no, 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 I believe he's able. Well, then at some point, his heart changed. And he used to be so merciful and so understanding, but boy, today he's not. I don't believe that. 
I believe we have a God who has the same heart we read about in Scripture and the same ability that we read about in Scripture. It's just that we don't look for him to be a miracle-working God anymore. We believe that God is kind of wrapped up in this book, and we bring this book out about once a week, and we look at it. Instead, we should recognize that God is an awesome healing God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, we look at this story, and I want to point some things out. And by the way, with this story about Bartimaeus, this is a great one for you to be able to mark your Bible. And it's okay, it's not sacrilegious for you to take a pen and mark some notes in your Bible because you may be at a point where you're the one being asked to come into a group and to share a message and somebody knows you're a believer and they say, will you come and share a message with us and you can share the story about Bartimaeus because there's so much in the story of Bartimaeus that's just outstanding to be able to help people understand the heart and the nature of God. So if you want to, go ahead and mark some of these thoughts. You can do it on your, uh, I don't know if we have bulletins this morning. You can do it on a piece of paper and mark this down. And by the way, I encourage this to be a church that takes notes. Now, don't get so wrapped up in your notes that you can't say amen. <laughs> but mark down notes because I have drawn from the notes that I have marked down for these many decades. I have marked down these notes and I've used notes over and over again in my life. It's kind of like those that journal well and those that don't. The ones that don't wish they did, but they're just not doing it and they never have and they never will unless they discipline themselves in that way. But the people that take notes... Remember every trip, remember every vacation, remember every family reunion. Others are like, yeah, I think we got together a few years. I can't remember. And I encourage you to take the notes in that way because you may be teaching this.